Hey, it's Phoebe, and today I'm exploring one of Singapore's oldest and coolest neighborhoods. I like my I'm going to tell you all about the history of Cheong Baru and why I love this part of Singapore so much but first it is time for coffee so let's go get ourselves a traditional breakfast. Coffee and kaya toast and a hawker center is something you just have to try if you come to Singapore and the Cheong Baru market has been here for a really long time it's one of the oldest in Singapore it was built around the 1950s it has undergone refurbishment but this place this is where the food is really good. Now, kaya toast is a traditional breakfast staple. It is two pieces of toast with butter and kaya jam inside. And kaya jam is made from coconut milk and pandan. So it has a really nice earthy taste. And then there's this. If you are gonna drink coffee in Singapore from a traditional coffee stand, you're about to board a rocket to the moon. This stuff will put hairs on your chest. It is seriously so strong and so good. Now, the people who run the stall I went to, Yue Hao Cafe, they were so lovely. They let me go inside and film, so a big thank you to them. Um, that was so lovely of you. But look, I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna dig in and give this a go. Oh, now, full disclosure, I get mine without the butter. Usually there's a big, thick slab of butter in there. You might see it and think, is that cheese? It's butter. I get mine just the kaya toast. Oh my god, that's so good. It's sweet and earthy and so delicious. Let's give this rocket fuel a shot. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to drink this whole thing. Straight into the stratosphere. The set with the kaya toast and the coffee cost me $2.30 in absolute steal and it would normally come with a side of eggs but I'm not really an egg eater. So if you do want the full experience, make sure you get the eggs as well. On the ground floor of the Tiong Baru market, you'll find an amazing wet market. I love coming down here. They've got beautiful flowers, lots of cool shops that you can check out and plenty of fresh food to pick up, take home or just try. new cemetery and that's because it used to be a burial ground. An influx of squatters and overcrowding turned the area into a swamp but that all began to change in the 1930s. That's when they started building these residential buildings that we see now and that's why these buildings have such a strong art deco feel to them. For a time it was known as the Den of Beauties or Mistress Village because a lot of men kept their second families here. But now it's just a beautiful trendy neighborhood and I love it for all of that history. I love the vintage retro buildings. If I could live somewhere in Singapore I would live here in Tiong Bahru. And there are so many cool cafes, boutiques and shops. You could just come here and spend the whole day like I am taking it easy and slowly exploring. But right now it's time for morning tea, so let's go get a bite to eat. We're gonna do two morning tea stops before lunch, and our first one is here at Plain Vanilla, and they are famous for their beautiful cupcakes and all kinds of sweet goodies they've got in that cabinet. Now, I have gone for their cupcake, their dark chocolate ganache. It looks so, so good. That's fantastic. <laughs> the cake is really nice and soft, not dry, and it's not too sweet. Mm. I feel like my solo vlogging is getting slowly 
better and better each time I do it. I feel a little bit more confident. I think I put a bit of pressure on myself to be perfect and do everything perfectly, which is something I do a lot. <laughs> so taking that pressure off myself and kind of relaxing into it and finding my style has been amazing. Now, those first few videos I've been making, the panic is real. The anxiety sets in. I, I set up the camera and I just kind of start to freak out <laughs> and I'm worried about what people are thinking of me but each time I just try to remind myself to just take a really deep breath and slow down in everything I'm doing I'm trying to slow myself down because otherwise that panic is too much and I don't want my videos to be rushed and not what I really want them to be and a funny thing that's happening is I'm really starting to enjoy the creative process more I feel like I'm able to use my eye more and show you the way that I see things and capture things in my own special way and I feel like slowly but surely the videos are becoming more me and more my style and I'm really enjoying that process and I hope you are too. For lunch we are back at the Hawker Centre. There's no way I'm eating at a restaurant and we have access to all this really good food and I'm actually going to be eating one of my favourite things to eat in Singapore. It is a dish called papaya. Now the best, or the way I like to describe papaya, imagine if somebody made a noodleless pad thai and turned it into a burrito. That's what papaya is to me. It's um, this beautiful kind of a soft, light skin, if you will, and then inside there's turnip and vegetables and peanuts and shrimp and all kinds of good stuff. Now I've ordered mine spicy. I may regret that. Spicy in Singapore means something different than it means in Australia. I'm gonna push through. And I've also got myself this beautiful passion fruit drink. Oh, I love this stuff. It's so refreshing on a really hot day like today. Now let me give you a piece of advice about Singapore Hawker Centers. If you see a queue, a long queue at one Hawker stall, join it. <laughs> it means whatever they are making there is really good and if you don't know what to order just politely ask the person in front of you and say hey what are you ordering what's good here and I've no doubt they'll hook you up. I have not had a bite of poppia in three years so this is a really happy reunion for me. Are you ready? Yes. Whew. That is spicy and freaking delicious. Now don't think I've forgotten about trying this for you. Oh my gosh. My advice to you when you come to Singapore's Hawker Centres is some, especially one as diverse and clean and beautiful as the one here in Tiong Baru, is just dive in guys. I mean, my popular was two dollars a piece. We are not breaking the bank here. If you order something and you hate it, just don't eat it. <laughs> Go and order something else, but be bold, be brave. Try lots of different foods. Ask the locals, ask people next to you, hey, that looks great. What are you eating and where can I get it? Or walk up to a hawker stall and say, hey, I'm not from here and I really want to try something. What would you recommend? And they will hook you up. Now let's dive into this. Mm. Hot dog, that is so refreshing. Now for those of you that were paying attention, I said we were going to be doing two morning tea spots and the second one is Tiong Baru Bakery. It is an institution all across the island. They are famous for their baked goods. They do incredible pastries. If you love things like croissants, pan au chocolat, this is going to be your spot. They also do amazing coffee, they do great sandwiches, that kind of thing. Now as I always do, I asked if I could film before I started filming and they did say they need to run that by their team behind the scenes. I was like, that's no trouble team. Like, don't worry, don't trouble yourselves. I'll just get my goodie to go and film it at the Hawker Center and they were so accommodating, so lovely. Now they have hooked me up with something I have never tried before. In fact, I can't remember the name of it. I asked the lady if I could take a photo of the name because I would never remember it. She said it was Kunaman. And that's what they're famous for. Um, I've never, I've never had one of these. What is this? <laughs> it's like a big pastry wheel, and apparently it's a specialty. So let's try some of that. I'm just gonna rip off a chunk and go for it. Oh, I hope I like it. Okay. That is absolutely beautiful, but it is a little too buttery for me. 
If I eat that whole thing, I will have the biggest tummy ache. So one more bite is going to have to do, but it's absolutely delicious. And you have to check out the Tiangbaru Bakery if you come here. The Chi Tiangong Temple is over nine decades old and this gorgeous place of worship is nicknamed the Monkey God Temple because it's dedicated to the main character from the Chinese literary classic Journey to the West and it is a really gorgeous spot to visit. Though if you are visiting, try and visit later in the day. There is no cloud cover around that thing and it is raging hot. Now in general, my tip to you would be to try and plan your Singapore activities starting in the afternoon and into the evening anyway. Most things here open in the afternoon and and it starts to get a lot cooler once that day starts to wear on so if you aren't used to this kind of heat that's going to be safest for you and again if you aren't used to the heat I need you to be drinking a lot of water and carry an umbrella with you not just a hat and umbrella it's going to give you a whole lot of shade and it is going to come in handy if you're visiting during the stormy season like I am now I do have a few more Singapore tips for you they're just going to make travel a whole lot easier Singapore's public transport system is everything you want it to be it is safe reliable cheap and easy to use I use a free app called move it and that helps me plan my journeys um, you say where you are where you want to go and it will plan the route for you on public transport I think today I've spent maybe two dollars on public transport it is that great value if you aren't a person that wants to use public transport you can download grab there's no uber in Singapore so make sure you download grab get it installed and get your payment methods added before you leave home it's just going to be easier now I recommend getting yourself a local sim card when you're traveling like this I have a 30 day Southeast Asia sim from sims direct it works in a whole bunch of countries I'm going to be visiting and it is really good value with 10 gig of data that is linked below for you all right, you guys, I hope you have enjoyed exploring Tiong Baru with me. I have really enjoyed slowing down the pace a bit in this video and just focusing on going to one part of Singapore that I love and spending a whole day exploring it slowly and taking my time and enjoying eating at a whole bunch of places. It's, it's nice to have that more relaxed pace and be able to, I don't know, infuse more of me and what I like to do into the videos. So I really hope you've enjoyed it. And with that, that brings this week's episode to a close. Now, if you don't already, be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode and say hello in the comments below. I hope you have a fantastic week ahead and I will see you with a brand new episode next week. Love ya.